Hello, and welcome to another Digital Photo Mentor Live. And it is Indigenous Peoples Day here in Canada. So I'm wearing my orange shirt, and I went to some activities today where I met some great friends that um, are in the community. So wherever you are joining in from, I hope you've had a great day or beginning of your day as it's morning already for some of you. Uh, I see that Neil has said that he is in... Glasgow, which is 1 a.m. So thanks for uh, staying up with us. I can't make that go on the screen. Hang on a second. Let me just see if I can solve this problem here. I'll turn my name off here. Why can't I make the comments? There we go. 1 a.m. already. So glad you stayed up late to join us. And for those of you who are in California, it should be 5 p.m. So just about dinner time, your time. And today we are doing editing of rural photos. So I've got this one on the screen because it's pretty representative of something that you would consider a rural scene, farming and so on. Uh, Sheila, nice to see you. And who else is with this? Dale, I'm not doing a coffee break, <laughs> a drink break. Okay. It's, it's beer or wine o'clock at that point. Um, Deb's in Alaska. Rainy. We had been rainy all week here, Deb, and we finally got some sun today. So um, that was awesome for uh, outside events. It was perfect timing. And yes, longest day of the year here as well. So also known as the summer, stol summer solstice, right? Manfred in Florida. Welcome. And Stephanie in Oregon. And let's see who else. Deb is in Alaska and the usuals. So um, I'm going to get started on these, but I, we've been talking about what's coming up for the next one because we haven't picked some themes yet. So we've talked about some ideas. And I want to get your guys' opinions as well because you are the ones that send in the images. So we're talking about animals as one topic potentially and another one as... Uh, my idea was forest or anything related to the forest, so trees, moss, pathways, and so on. Uh, and then another idea that Rob had was to do something motion related, so action, anything that involves action. So that could be sports, pets, uh, panning, and so on. So I think we're going to start with um, animals and, and action. <coughs> <coughs> Choked me right up. <laughs> so animals and action, the two A's. So as always, you can submit your photos using those two links. And I did get your photos, Dale, and they look fine. They're of D&G, so shouldn't be a problem. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to switch over here to my Lightroom view. And I've got a few that want to be edited in Lightroom and a few that want their images edited in Luminar. So I've got those sort of color coded here. So there's your images, Dale. Ooh, my apologies. Apparently, I need more coffee today. Stephanie Forest. Oh, next week in Olympic National Park. Okay, perfect. All right, do work on the forest because that's going to come next. So we're going to do animals, action, and then forest. Those are going to be the next three. So you can send them anytime. Action week with multiple other sessions. Um, not sure what you mean, Dale. Multiple other sessions. Not sure what you mean. Um, so I am going to work on this images of, uh, this image of Debs because I had this one out first and it was kind of representative of rural and farming to me. Um, so not sure where you took this one. I don't know if it's got any geo data. Sometimes the if images have geo data, in which case we haven't really talked about this. You can actually map it. Um, and if it has geodata, it will plug it in. Um, so you could see some do. Uh, let's see. There's three that have this. There's one with this tag. I'm going to guess that's Brandon's. So in this group here, it looks like there are a few that do have geotag, but that one does not. Okay, so uh, let's go back here. Yeah, see the geodag, geodata would be in here. Um, see where it says GPS information? Where's my cursor gone now? Oh, there we go. My cursor's here. If it has GPS data, it would be in here. And this, these ones do not. So I'm looking. If your camera, so this one, for example, has GPS data. Um, 
and it should, if I go to map it, show this one here. Okay, so I think it's this one here. Yeah, there's the dog. See, so if you hover over, it shows that that one is the dog. And if I zoom in here, I can see that this one is a squirrel. And this one is a cow. So I'm guessing these are hollies. Yeah, <laughs> so hollies are geotagged as well. So that's just kind of a little side note about the mapping if you have that option in, uh, in your camera, okay? Okay, so when we start with this one, it is a raw file. Um, let me see if I can get the information to display here so you can see the shooting data. There we go. So Nikon file, NEF, ISO 200, F56 at one, one over one over 1600. So a very fast shutter speed and looks like 28 to 300 mil lens shot with 58 mil focal length. Okay. So the first thing I want to do, and it's a raw file, is to do the camera profile. And I'm going to go in here and look at the camera profiles for the NEF file. And you can see sort of little previews here, but if you hover over, of course, you'll get a full preview. And the landscape <clears throat> is always going to give you a better, better representation. Look at how much more contrast and punch right out of the gate it has. So I think I'm just going to go with the camera's landscape <coughs> profile. Excuse me. And... I'm now going to do the shift double click trick. So you've seen me do this before. Hold down the shift key, double click on the word whites, double click on the word blacks. Okay, so now we've set the black point and the white point. You see the graph got spread out here. And now the exposure slider is going to shift it back and forth, right? So it's going to make it a little darker overall, which is sort of the midtones. I can also do that by grabbing the middle of the histogram and you'll see that it pulls the exposure slider to the left. Same thing as what I just did, right? Now, the next thing I want to do is crop it and make sure that that horizon is straight because it looks a little bit crooked to me, but my eyes could be off. So I'm just going to hit auto. Looks pretty straight. So it didn't do much of a correction. So I'm going to try the ruler. And I'm going to set the ruler here right on the horizon there. And then I'm going to stretch it all the way out over here. Okay, so now it corrected it a little bit more. So it was slightly crooked and Lightroom wasn't able to adjust it uh, automatically. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to go off aspect ratio. So I want to make sure it's unlocked because there's a lot of foreground here. If you'll notice, like, See the rule of thirds where the squares are and you can see the thirds. One third of the image is is sort of already tilled land and the ground, you know, the, the weed is on the ground. Um, then the sky is one third. And for me, the subject and the interesting part is in the middle. So it's not taking up a lot of the image. So I want to come in and get rid of some of these bits here. And I'm thinking panoramic okay so i'm going to come in from the bottom and i'm going to get rid of that whole dark spot in the, the bottom there and i'm going to come down from the top a little bit right okay, now the horizon is still in the middle so i could go more severe right and put the horizon sort of more on the thirds when you place your horizon you are telling the viewer which thing is more important okay right? so if i was to place the horizon down here, okay, now I've got more, I don't know why I cropped in here, now I've got more sky than I do land, okay, so you're telling the viewer the sky is really important here, okay, let's, let's emphasize it even more, oops, that's why I cropped in a little bit, let's emphasize it just a tiny bit more by leaving it fall, okay, so now you're seeing, okay, that's a lot of sky, if we go the other way and we have a little bit of sky, now you're telling the viewer the land is more important, okay? <coughs> Which in this case, it is. So I'm going to go with something about like that, okay? Now I'm going to adjust the color. It's a little bit warm for my liking. So let's just try auto and see what color it makes. See how it dialed this number down a little bit. I can also try just daylight, which for me is always got too much pink. So I always dial it down to about four or five. 
Now we're getting closer. This is a little bit more yellow and less orange. It was a little bit orange, okay? I'm going to give it a little bit of clarity, a little bit of texture, and I want to give it some overall contrast as well. There's some sort of the light is coming from looks like straight above almost midday and we want to vignette these edges. So I'm going to add a vignette using the effects panel and I'm going to use, I'm going to use color priority. So dial it dark, bring the feather down. And in this case, I want to kind of bring it in tight like this. Actually, about like that. I like that shape, okay? So that's a good shape for my vignette. And then just bring the feather up and adjust so it's not quite so severe. Right. Now, if I want this part on the bottom even darker, that's where I'm going to go in and add a linear gradient in this case, okay, a mask. So I'm gonna come up from the bottom so these guys always come from the edge, right? So you can move it in and out, but it always comes from one edge. You can also tilt it and you can make it more faded or less faded based on how far apart you make the lines. So in this case, I just want the exposure to come down and I'm gonna bring some blacks down as well. Okay, so you see what happens when I do that, right? Is it's really focusing and bringing the eye inward and then I'm going to bring the saturation down because when we increase the contrast, it increases the saturation and the color. And I don't want extra color there because that's going to pull your eye as well. Okay. Now I'm going to do sky. So select sky. And in this case, what I found is when you increase the dehaze, the sky gets really interesting. So look at the haze in the air. Okay. Now we're getting that effect of that vignette, but... I might like this effect and we'll dial back the vignette. So I'm going to go add a bunch of white. So give it some more contrast. Okay, so I'm increasing the whites and the highlights and giving it more contrast. Okay. Now we can see we can really got that vignette on the edges. So playing around with giving the sky a little bit more contrast. Let's show some clarity as well. You can also now adjust the color of the sky separately. So if I want more blue, we can make more blue. And in this case, that's kind of nice. A little bit less pink, right? Something like that. Don't want to oversaturate. Always keep it subtle. And I'm going to go dial back that vignette. Maybe a little bit. You also want to check lens corrections because there is a vignette that's inherent sort of in the, the lens. Okay, so I'm going to turn on profile corrections and you'll notice that it found that lens, the 28 to 300, and look at it fixed the corners. Okay, so see what that does. It fixes distortion and the edge vignetting. Okay, now if I like the distortion, you can actually put it back. Just dial it back to zero. Okay, so yeah, that fixes the edge, the edge problem. So now I can come and dial the vignette back in, like so. All right. Um, this one is a little bit tricky because it is making the corners dark. So you want to avoid a vignette that looks like this, okay? So we could go another route and do another linear gradient and just do the sky. See, that's a little more even. I'm trying to give it some contrast. It's fairly out of focus. Right. That looks better. There we go. Okay, so if you're getting those edges on the corners too dark, try another method for darkening. Use a different type of vignette. Okay. Now I'm going to do one more mask and I'm going to do a radio gradient. I'm just going to do it across the middle like this. And I'm going to do another sort of darkening on the outside and make it 
really subtle. Okay. Oops, see it's darkening the inside, so I have to invert it. I forgot to invert it. There we go, that's better. And a little bit like so. And when I'm darkening, I actually increase the blacks, which is again, increasing the saturation. So I gotta dial that down again. And so anytime you give it more punch, remember to dial that saturation back down. Okay, let's take a look at a before and after. So then we've got before, it was pretty hazy and no color, right? Now we've got some color and it's a really nice um, complementary colors of the yellow and the blue. I thought about cropping this one in from the left a little bit as well um, to get rid of some of this field, right? So put this, put this combine a little more off center, but I think the, the, context and having the farm buildings over on the left makes it makes it balanced makes it a little more balanced so i like having that left there hey trish good to see you see we're back into the times we're down under folks can attend um let's see hey holly <laughs> i've got your i got your cows right I got your cows coming. So what do we think about this? Uh, it's Deb's image, good before and after. Um, this one might make an interesting black and white, or if you wanted to turn it into something that looks like an old time photo, I'll show you a quick trick, right? So if you just dial the saturation down to about minus 50, let's go minus 65, so about like that, okay? And then go into color grading, and what you want to do is do the shadows and pick a hue somewhere over here in the yellow orange range. Give it a little bit of saturation and see how I'm doing that. It starts to look more antique. Can you see that? Okay. I can even darken the blacks this way. Here's another trick actually. This luminant slider in the color grading allows you to add contrast. So see how I can darken the shadows this way? So let's say I wanna do mid-tones and I don't necessarily wanna add any color, but see how I can adjust the tone? So you can actually use this tool for adjusting highlights, mid-tones and shadows, the brightness as a little, so there's a little kind of um, sneak peek. Maybe that's a quick tip video I can make, Rob. I can make that in like two minutes. Just a quick tip um, using the color grading tool in Lightroom. If you wanted to add a texture overlay or something, then you would have to go to either Photoshop or to Luminar. So let's hop over to Luminar and do one over there. So I've got a few Luminar images saved here. And I wanted to talk about this one, Holly, because the image itself is quite interesting. I really like the concept of what you try to do here. She's got down low in the grass and there's ever so slightly like little bits in focus here in the grass right but i feel like there's not one thing to catch my eye there you need to have something in focus other than oh i've lost my mouse again sorry my mouse keeps there we go keeps getting disconnected other than this sort of dead dandelion is the only thing that's sharp and it's not enough to grab my eye so ever so slightly maybe at a higher camera angle or if you had been closer to this little flower here and get these little flowers sharp you need to have something in the foreground sharp but i le really like where you're going with this one with the, the thing the background like super out of focus right so if this is nearby go and try this one again because i really like um i really like what you've done here no, the barn is way out of focus. Your focus is right here in the foreground, right on these dandelions, right? See that? And then as we get closer, the fence is out of focus and the barn is way out of focus. So I thought you were doing that intentionally, right? And it's actually really cool, but I like the camera angle. Um, it's just really out of focus. But save this image because this you could do some neat things with this, right? Like if we take this into edit, um, you could use the erase tool and get rid of some of these, these, get rid of the sign on here. And I might even get rid of, get rid of the um, dandelions, right? I would probably even just get rid of this whole thing. 
get the wall nice and clean because guess what? The fact that this is out of focus will actually make a nice background for you, right? So you could use this as a background replacement for something else. So take one of your portraits, stick this in as a background, just clean it up a little bit first, right? Just an idea. So don't, don't pitch this one. This could make a neat background, right? And don't sharpen it either. I wouldn't touch it. So instead of the working on that one, we're going to work on the cow. It doesn't get any more rural than a cow, right? Um, I'd love to see your edited one, Holly. Um, maybe you have a different shot. Maybe you sent me the wrong one. And also, like Lee said, Leah said, if you're um, using the autofocus, it picks something. If you're using autofocus with all of your, your like the zone active, basically auto point, um, then it chooses where to focus, right? So make sure you're using single point focus. Rob, um, if you're listening in there, could you please share the article on getting sharper images? Um, it's the one that has the cheat sheet and it talks about settings for, um, it talks about settings for getting sharper images. And one of those settings is, is autofocus single point versus zone. Okay. Now Neil is saying that you would use manual focus in that situation. I would not because the trick with manual focus is it, you can't visually tell when it's in focus, unless you're using a mirrorless camera and it has focus peaking, um, or you're using a tripod. If you're using a tripod, then you can do it, but you have to use live view then and zoom in on the view and then manual focus, right? So I wouldn't use manual focus in that situation. I would use single dot focus and place it where I want it. If you wanted the barn in focus, place it on the barn, right? And Dale is volunteering to send Holly his glasses. <laughs> nice, nice one. Um, okay. Aren't you guys across the country from each other, though? So that's probably not going to work. All right. So now we have, as as Dale said, we have holy cow. Well, we don't know. We don't know if this cow has been blessed. So we don't know if she's a holy cow, but she's cute. Go to, so let's start with, um, before we do develop raw, I want to do a crop. Okay. So I want to just make sure that it's straight. And I'm looking at this case in the vertical line. So the up and down of, of the fence post. So I'm going to try horizon alignment. Okay, it did something. Is it correct? I'm not sure. Um, I'm just going to do it manually because to me, look at the posts now. Those look more up and down. I'm looking at the four posts, okay? So I think that's a little better. And I'm going to go crop it also a little bit from the backside because she's right in the middle and I want to have a little more space in front of her. So I'm going to come in a little bit and then just move her up like so. Now, the other thing that we could do because she's facing left is we can actually flop her. So she's facing right. right? I tend to like images um, that are going left to right because that's the way that's the way our eye reads left to right. So this way she's facing more into the future. The other way she's facing more um, away. Now it looks crooked again. Maybe my eyes are playing tricks on me. Oh, I think because I flipped it, I got to go the other way. All right, let's just try to let's try this again. Flip it first, then I'm gonna fix it. Okay, there we go. Then crop in a little tighter and give her some space. So I want to, it looks like maybe she's on a hill, right? So the fence is straight up and down, but it looks like she's on a hill, right? Something like that. There we go. Okay, so now she's got a little bit of space in front of her, more space in front than behind. So that's where I want to start. So develop raw. Okay. Um, here I'm looking at, is she 100% sharp? That I'm not sure about, but we'll see what we can do to sharpen her up. Okay. So let's check the camera profiles. Let's see if landscape does a good job. And now when we hover over, we get previews here in Luminar as well. 
So once again, landscape. So landscape tends to want to enhance blues and greens um, and yellows to some extent. And portrait uh, looks for skin tones and enhances that, right? Interesting. 90% of the times they are facing left. Interesting. I wonder where that is. Are they facing west? Are they facing the sun? Interesting. Interesting. Is it a steer? Oh, I thought it was a dairy cow. Not a she. Well, I didn't see any boy bits. I thought it was a dairy cow. My uh, my family was dairy farmers, so I recognize some some types of cows, but it looked like a dairy cow to me, Sheila. I could be mistaken. Somebody look up what type of cow this is. Um, zebras always face away from the camera. Rob says, yes, tell them about your experience of photographing all kinds of animals' backsides in Africa. So now once I've got um, the camera profile, uh, I want to look at the curve and I want to adjust the same thing. So I want to see if I've got good blacks and whites. So J key, we've got a little bit of clipping. So we're going to make sure we get the highlights in order here. And I'm going to add a little bit of black. Ever so slightly clipping there on the nose. There we go. And I feel like I want to brighten her a little bit. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to solve the problem with the clipping on the highlights here, but we'll come back to that one. Okay, so it's not it's not too bad. It's ever so slightly um, a little overexposed, but I'm brightening her a little bit. So I'm working on the cow. Uh, while we're here, I always want to make sure to do chromatic aberration. We can do the distortion correction, which is the same thing I did on in Lightroom. Okay. And we can also deven yet, but I don't see that it's a big problem here, right? So I'm not going to worry about that. And noise reduction, there is a little bit of noise here, but it's not it's not really too bad. See, there is a purple outline there, right? So I, I did check off chromatic aberration, and it's like actually adding that. So always double check by zooming in because sometimes I find that defringe in this case, does a better job. So when I checked off chromatic aberration, it actually looks like it added it. Okay, so now I've got a purple outline um, around the cow. Well, let's look at her butt, or his butt. We'll just say, we'll just call it uh, an unidentified gender at this point. Yeah, Defringe is doing a better job. So always zoom in and check that your chromatic aberration is doing a good job. So I'm going to leave it like that. Okay. Next, I want to do a vignette because I definitely want to darken this area around the cow. So again, same type of idea. I'm going to darken. I'm going to make it smaller. And then I can place it, which you can't do in Lightroom. So if you want to place your vignette in Lightroom, you actually need to do a radio filter and the develop tool again. So I'm just going to feather it. The ground is a little too bright here still. So I'm going to come back and do that another way. Okay. Or I can work on making this a little smaller. Let's try that. See if I can darken the ground. I want this part at the bottom darker. That's a little better, right? We can also do that another way, right? I'm going to go to the color tool and get right into HSL and luminance. Okay, so what do we know about the grass? Grass is usually green, but it also has lots of yellow. So I'm going to darken green. You can see what that does. So there's definitely green in the grass, but watch yellow, okay? See how much yellow there is in the grass as well? And just curious if it solves. Cow looks more orange. So I'm going to just dial the yellow and the green down. And we can brighten the cow up. See that? Cow is orange. 
But if I don't want to brighten this background, we can come back to the cow and do that one separately as well. So right now we're just doing the grass. Okay. That really helps her to stand out more big time. Um, I'm going to do a little darkening on the orange. Let's do something like that. And then I'm just going to mask out the cow. Let's see if it can find our cow. I wish there was a select subject masking tool in Luminar, which um, they don't have. Yeah, I didn't see udders either. It's just Stephanie. So um, kind of identifying, trying to identify this cow. Okay, so man-made ground, natural ground. Should pick up most of this. Okay, there we go. So that's kind of what I was looking for. And uh, that looks pretty good. If anything, I'm just going to paint these. Yeah, it thinks the cow is architecture. I'm just going to go in here and paint using the brush up in here to get the fence. So any spots it missed. So I got really close. Okay, so now we can see that it's just affecting the background. Okay. You can also use it to shift the color by going to hue. So if I want to neutralize the orange a little bit, if I want the blue, the green to be more yellow or more blue. And so on. Okay, so color, so far we got our cow standing out nice. And before I go away from this one, I'm actually going to copy this mask because the mask is pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to copy this mask and then I'm going to go add some structure. But I only want it on the cow. So I'm going to paste the mask and then invert it. Okay, so now we've got it just on the cow see we're giving her some texture in her fur or his fur its name is moonshine it does look like a jersey cow that's what i was thinking as well uh, let's see what else next okay so then details this is the one where i said we can sharpen a little bit i'm not a fan of honestly i'm not a fan of the um super sharp extension so much, but let's give it a try. All right, let's just try it on universal low and see what we get. We've got Guernsey versus Jersey. Well, there's two different kinds, right? Jersey cow. Yeah, now Guernsey and Jersey are completely different and they don't have to have white on them. So I'm, I'm Googling Jersey cows and that's the kind of cow that I think it is which is why I was calling it a cow so you, that's a Jersey cow and it looks like that right but definitely this one has udders right maybe she's just not had a baby so you can't see them right look at this one so that definitely looks like our cow so Guernsey is something completely different yeah, Guernsey is this kind. And there's lots of different ones. Usually they definitely have spots. Um, my uncle had, had both, actually. My uncle had this kind of cow. So perhaps we are both right. All right, so this is what it's doing. Again, see, it's not, it's not doing a great job. It's doing weird stuff. So I tend to not use Super Sharp, like, ever. It's just not in my arsenal. Um, if you want to sharpen, I still use details. Okay, so I will use the small detail slider and the medium detail slider. Let's just take it all the way and see what we get. See, look at how much sharper the cow starts to look when we bring those small details up. Can you see that? It does bring the noise up as well. Okay, so you have to be careful and sort of find a balance. 
So somewhere in there, we're going to sharpen as well. Because we're going to mask it to just the cow, right? And I might even just mask it just to the face. So once again, I'm going to paste in that. Oops, I got to paste it first. And then invert it. So now we're just sharpening the cow. So that's a little bit too far. So I dialed it up pretty high. Let's just dial it back down. There we go. Okay, so before and after. I still feel like I want to darken the edges more. Like it's not giving me an, a nice dark vignette. And we've got some, you know, piles of things that cows leave piles of. So I would go in and do the erase tool. Um, by the way, did everybody watch the video that I did on the erase tool versus the clone tool? Because I think that came up um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, so if you haven't watched that, please share a link to that one, Rob. We just posted that yesterday. And that is using the clone tool and the healing tool together or the erase tool and the, the clone tool together. Okay, so these big piles of stuff here and I should be zooming in when I'm doing this but it's doing a really good job getting rid of these these gifts that the cow has left us there we go these ones out of focus you know could be dirt could be a cow gift so you get to decide I like to clean them up a little bit you know clean these things up just to make it look a little bit nicer Do we have any more? Oh, there's one over here. And I talked about, you know, doing smaller chunks and not trying to attempt to do a large chunk of uh, erasing, especially when you have something against something else like that. Okay, clean that up real nice. And to darken the edges, I'm going to go into, we could go with the dodge and burn tool, but I'm just going to go with develop. This was my hack uh, before. And Dale said, this is sort of the gold standard. So this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to lower the exposure and the blacks. And then I'm going to use the brush and I'm going to paint in with a large brush at maybe 33%. So I'm just going to start going around and I want it to be not perfect. Yeah, see now I need to dial it down because I've already painted too much. See, it's looking too dark. So I want the edges like so. And I think I can dial the blacks back a little bit. Not so much black. So I'm trying to make it random so it's not like a circle around the cow. See that? So I'm trying to just do some random painting here. Okay? So I don't want a halo around the cow. And then we can go back and really focus on darkening this bottom area. Notice that I did some of the legs as well because then it helps with that that spot that was bright. Okay. So if I go back here, right now we don't have anything highlighted anymore except a little bit of the nose. So see how that's darkening. Okay. Now I could also copy this mask. Okay. And if I want to do any blur or anything like that, for example, if I want to do some negative structure, Again, that's a little too much. And then just paste it in. So I just want the background blurred a little bit. See that? And if I don't want it on this bottom part, I can just erase it from here. So I don't want to blur the part where the cow is standing. 
always this place where your subject is standing should be sharp as well. So if you're adding any blur in the background, right? So we make our own bokeh background. Uh, lastly, I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm just going to change it to multiply. And it will, should darken for us as soon as it pops in. And then I can even mask it further than that. Let me check the questions here. Okay. Cow paws. Erase the hair under the cow. <laughs> okay, we can do that. I know you want to fatten the cow up. Interesting. Well, I don't think the cow is that skinny. White edges of the cow create a halo. Um, yeah, a little bit, but that has to do with the lighting though as well. So it's not too bad. Bring to Photoshop, add a gallon of milk. Well, you can do that here as well. But Photoshop would do that new AI thing. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Um, it is a dodge and burn technique, Sheila. And this is the one that I had the hack <coughs> for Luminar Neo before we had the dodge and burn tool, if, not, if you remember. Maybe share a video, um, link to that video, please, Rob. The dodge and burn hack. Okay, so now that it's cut up, I'm going to dial the opacity down a little bit. And this is something that I wish that I could paste the mask from one layer to the other. And I've talked to Dima about this. But if I want to paint it where I want it and erase it other places, okay? So, for example, if I want to erase it off the cow, okay? So now I'm erasing as opposed to painting in. Okay, so it's duplicating and darkening effectively. Okay. Except we don't want the cow really affected, especially her face. I still think it's a her. Okay, so let me just dial. So there's a zero opacity, and as darker we go, we get this more of a vignette. So there's our before and after. Ollie wants the, the hair cloned out. Well, I should have done that on the bottom layer because now I've copied the layers, so I'd have to do it on both. Um, but yes, we can we can do the hair. Yeah, see? I still think it's a it's a girl, but the fact that that hair is there could indicate that it's a boy. There we go. Okay. Gross hair is now gone. <laughs> okay. There's our before and after. Show ready. Well, we did remove it anyways. <laughs> now I just changed the gender. No, I didn't. I didn't castrate him. I'm still confident this is a girl cow. I think this is a Jersey cow. I think Neil's right. Any questions about that before I move on? Because we did a few things here. Um, and we could also, I'm just going to turn off this copy layer for a second. We could also do a lot um, or some mystical. We could give the cow a little bit of mystical. My favorite, of course. And like so. And I could also do some super contrast because the background looks really flat to me. Oh, and I didn't try my other favorite color harmony. So color contrast. Let's work with that. I don't know. It's going a little bit too much. I'm not crazy about what that one's doing. But I think maybe super contrast. If we add some mid-tone contrast. That's all right. And then we can add some shadow contrast. There we go. So super contrast gives it a little punch as well. Now I'm feeling like she's a little bit yellow overall. So I might go back in here and adjust the color and just take out a tiny bit of yellow. Et voilà. 
<laughs> well, you can't see the udders if the cow isn't ready to milk, right? They would just be nipples. So here we are talking about cow parts. <laughs> Hilarious. All right, let's go back to Lightroom, and then I'm going to come back to that stormy image of yours, Dale, because I really like that one. Um, okay, so we kind of did the cow. We did that one. All right, let's see. We've got um, Stephanie's here, right? Yeah, Stephanie's here. We've got one of these from Stephanie, which is some cool layers and stuff happening there. Um Marguerite here. Is Kelly or Marguerite here? I haven't seen either of them. Uh, we've got a little chipmunk. We've got a cow, another cow. We already did a cow. We've got a horse. Sheila sent a horse. This is a while back. That was obviously because it's winter. So that's kind of a cool image. Um, oh, that's Lightroom. That's, that's Luminar as well. Um, this is also kind of a neat one. It's like a rainy day. Uh, and I kind of want to see what I can do with this one. So let's start with Stephanie's. Let's start with this one. So color. Look at the difference. Landscape. Boom. Look at that. Unbelievable, right? The other one that I'm kind of liking here is in the modern Adobe ones. Um, and you can get other things to download. Um, it's not working so well on this image, but I'm kind of liking modern number four and number six, but it doesn't work as well as landscape on this image. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one. Now I want to, I want to crop out or deal with this tree over here on the side, but I'm afraid that if I crop, we're going to lose the house as well. So I think I'm going to leave it and see what we can do with the um, cloning tool to clone it out. All right. Now let's talk about cropping while we're in here. Right? Sky, little strip. That's okay. We got a strip of yellow. Then we kind of got a strip of green. And then we got another strip of yellow down here. So this is all about sort of these layers and levels, right? If anything, I might come in a little bit from the bottom just I'm debating keeping this fence or not. So let's just see what happens if we take it out and come in on both ends, both sides here to keep the aspect ratio. So let me take a look at that. Okay. I'm also debating flipping this one as well um, because now the lines lead you this way to the house okay can you see this so you come in here and you lead down to this house so this looks like a corral or this barn okay versus this way you come in from the left and the house is already there and then you go up and you follow the lines out of the picture okay so that's why i'm tempted to flip this one now if this is a photo of this farm for this person obviously you're not going to do that because they're not going to understand it but there's no writing on this and if it's just a, an artistic representation of this property for yourself there's no reason why you can't do that okay all right now let's do the shift double click see i figured it was going to bring the whites down but that's okay we're going to bring the whites up and then bring it back down on the highlights like so so already look at the difference we've got lots of punch I think I want to warm it up a tiny little bit somewhere in there and it feels a little on the magenta side as well just a little so now I'm still not sure about this bottom part so now that I flipped it let's have another look the fence does lead you in but the part that bothers me is that it's cut off and it's only partly there okay so I kind of like it cropped in a little tighter um, and let's bring us closer to this barn. Um, I'm also debating more of a pano style again with this one because it's all about the lines coming across. Now, if we come all the way up to here and get rid of more of the foreground, we minimize that, that diagonal line in the foreground. But I'm not sure... I'm not sure that's a good thing. This this sort of anchors the corner here. So I like this corner bit. I like this corner bit. So I'm going to keep as much as possible. 
And then let's deal with this tree over here with the clone tool. So once again, I'm using keyboard shortcuts as usual. Q is for the clone tool or healing tool. So I'm going to use the content aware one. Look what a great job that did. <sighs> Boom. Right. You used to have to go to Photoshop for this kind of stuff. Now, not so much. I'm just going to do a refresh because that one looks like it's matching too much. That's better. So what I'm looking for is it was making a rep repetitive pattern there, which I didn't want. Right. So I want to make sure I don't get stuff repeated. Uh, this one, I need to take the whole thing, I think. Let's do the whole shoot and match. Okay, so you can hit refresh and see if it gets any better. That's not bad. Um, now, there's another little part here. I want to do this one again. But you can't paint <coughs> in the same spot again. So here's a little trick. Just get a bigger brush. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm. Just get a bigger brush, paint it somewhere else nearby, and then just move it over top. I think I need to paint a bigger one. So I'm just going to get a bigger brush and make sure that I get it. Okay, so I want to make sure I got enough to cover the area. There we go. Okay, now see what that did? Much better. And I'm just going to keep clicking refresh till I got something that looks like it actually belongs. A little blurry. That's not bad. Okay. See the difference? Okay. Just get rid of that. I'm going to make sure I got the highlights down here. And I'm going to add a little bit of clarity. And the neat thing about the dehaze slider is if you increase the dehaze slider, often it only affects the sky because the sky is a thing that looks kind of hazy. And just by bringing up the dehaze, you'll end up with this spectacular looking sky. Okay. I still feel like it's, it's almost too blue. So I'm going to increase that a little bit more. And now I feel like we need a vignette. So, because the subject is off centered here, we could try a basic vignette, right? Darkening edges, but I think I'm going to do go a little more custom. Okay. So I'm going to go with a mask and I'm just going to go around. I think it's a barn. I want to say it's a barn. There's horses or animals like that. Okay. Invert it. And then I can start to darken. And when you do that, again, you might need to bring the saturation down. This corner might need a little darkening, so I'm going to do a linear one at the bottom. And just darken this corner like so. Again, keeping the saturation down. Okay, so there's our before and after. Way more color, right? We can further go in and play with the color using HSL, just like we did in Luminar, which is the color tool. Okay, so we can desaturate if we don't want to focus on the yellow so much. So I might want to dial it down just a tiny little bit. Be careful of blues because it tends to go crazy. So watch out for the blue. And same thing with the green. So I'm dialing the saturation down a little bit. And let's see if the blue will make the blue a little more green, a little bit more blue, and the blue a little bit more cyan -y, like so. You can also darken. So if we want the green layer darker, we can do that. Yellow, okay. orange. And remember, there's a targeted tool here. So if I don't know what color this is, I can use the targeted tool and say, well, I want to darken this. Now, notice that it darkens lots of things, okay? So it darkens all the stuff. It's darkening yellow and orange, okay? So I'm just going to reset these two. And I'm going to try just orange, 
Okay, so orange affects the bottom part, but not the yellow. So let's dial that down just a bit. Doesn't have any red in it. I would have thought there would be some red. But this is a really cool image in terms of the colors, you know, the red, green, blue. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm still debating this crop and getting rid of this green grass at the bottom. Now I think it's this one. I think this is the best crop because um, it just simplifies things. And I'm going to bring this mask up a little bit to darken a little bit more. See that? Just darkening that foreground a little bit. Okay. We didn't do a mask on the sky. I could do a mask on the sky and see if I can punch that up at all. Uh, once the sky is masked, again, we could try dehaze. Now, look, there's a tiny cloud there. You can also now see that I have a dust spot in the sky. So I can use that and just dial the saturation down a little bit. It's kind of gone a funky color now. A little bit magenta. And I can see that I need to deal with this spot now. So, oops. Can you see this spot right here? Okay, so that is usually a water spot on the lens. That is not dust on your sensor. That is usually a water spot on your lens. So if you have something that looks like that, check the front of your lens. And it usually only shows up when you're shooting with a more closed down aperture. This is F8. So if you're shooting wide open, you won't actually get them in focus. So check your lens, Stephanie, and see if this one, um, if you've got a clean lens. This may have been a while ago. So, you know, that may be water under the bridge at this point, right? There we go. Beautiful image with lots of, of colors and life. And if we went to AI, yeah, we could add some horses in the field. We can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Night, Sheila. We'll see you. I may get to your horse today. <laughs> okay, so long since, yeah, long since passed. So that's what that is. Definitely on the lens. Okay, cool. Eastern Washington State. Uh, yeah, Trish, it's two different plants. So I believe the yellow is canola and the green, as Stephanie said, is wheat usually growing. Yeah. More like what you saw when you took the photo. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, dip the field stop stops partway up the hill. Um, I would say that's probably correct. Um, looks pretty sharp. No, looks pretty sharp all the way. I see sharpness up here ever so slightly, perhaps. Um, but when you're shooting with, like, this is a 95 mil lens, so it's not a, 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 a um, it's not a short lens, right? So you're shooting far away. So she's obviously a fair distance away from this thing, meaning that everything in the scene is, is fairly equidistant according to, like, a, based on the lens. Okay. The lens will see all of that as, as similar distance. There's not a lot of difference between the building and the, in the hill. Okay. So most of that is, is sharp that I see. All right. Let's go back to Luminar. And uh, let's see, let's do Dale's um, which other one? We've got Lee. Lee is here as well. Okay, let's see if we can do Dale's and Lee's. So this one, the stormy sky, like really dramatic, right? Uh, you said this was on your your cell phone. Uh, let me see if I can get some metadata. See, this is the thing I I bugs me about luminars. I can't really get the metadata here. It's kind of a small panel, right? Um, I can go to Lightroom and get the data over here. 
right? It gives me a little bit more information here. So iPhone, iPhone 13, triple camera. All right, so let's take this. Let's try some presets, actually. Um, to me, this one is a scene that might look really cool in black and white, right? So there's some neat color here, but it might look really cool in black and white. So let's just see. Well, let's look at Overcast. I didn't even look at the ones that it was recommending. I just kind of I picked one, but I'm curious. Okay, so dynamic result. Oh, that's kind of cool. Look at how it brings out the um, the yellow versus the green in the field. Okay. There's a black and white. That's interesting. Of those, the dynamic fields is kind of neat. But let me see what it suggested. Easy landscapes. Long exposure is one that I like a lot. Um, Trish, yeah, we, we call it rapeseed as well, but um, usually it's just, it's canola. Well, at least we call it that here in, in Alberta. Uh, iPhone, Neo says it's iPhone 14. Um, that's a good, that's interesting. I'll go back and have a look at that. Ooh, that one's kind of nice. Forest Stream is nice. I think I like Forest Stream. Yeah, I think I like Forest Stream. So I'm going to apply that. And now you can dial the presets back if you want. Let's go back here. Oh, yeah, it does say iPhone 14. iPhone 14 2 back telephoto camera. Yeah, it does say. But then it says here iPhone 13 Pro back triple camera. So it seems confused. Yeah, it seems confused. So now we've applied the preset. Right? Now we can go in and, and check the edits, but I want to do a crop here as well. Okay, so what am I looking for when I'm cropping? Well, I've talked about a few things already. I'm looking for a horizon placement. Are things straight? Do I need to straighten? And again, here, what is the subject here? For me, the subject is literally stormy. And there's this kind of spooky looking tree with a spooky looking sky. And a third of the bottom part of the image is foreground that to me doesn't add to the picture. So I'm going to go again off aspect ratio. And I'm just going to come in on the bottom. Right. See the difference right. now. Do I want to come in on this side? Maybe a little. And believe it or not, I'm thinking of flipping again. Okay. So I don't flip every single image, but I want to look at this one flipped because again, the leading lines, you meander sort of across the hill, your eye goes left to right. Right. In our society, in a society that speaks English and reads English, we read left to right. OK, so you want your subject in this bottom left corner, ideally. Right. Or bottom right corner. Pardon me. Bottom right corner is the PowerPoint. Right. Where if your subject can land there. Right. Um, it will be more more powerful, a more dynamic image. So let me just crop it that way and see what you think okay can you see now how the hills sort of ramble over the hill and the fence also and everything leads you back to this tree and then the tree itself has this sort of return it's like okay we get here and then the tree wants you to look up here and then we come back down here so this way your eye ends up in this sort of loop doing this okay versus the other way where you enter okay, from here and your eye follows the clouds and then your eye follows the tree and we get to the hills and you just keep going. Okay. So it's a really subtle difference, but an important one. Okay. Can you guys see that? Uh, the tree does not look as powerful flipped. Well, I'm not done yet, Dale. So hold on, hold your horses or cows or whatever. <laughs> okay. 
So let me see if this preset did anything. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so it applied a little bit of smart contrast. Uh, I'm going to pull the highlights down. And I know that I'm going to do a sky adjustment as well. So we haven't even started doing anything with funky contrast. So I'm doing a whole bunch of, we still got some sky clipping there, but it's not too bad, right? Okay? The shadows up a little bit. Okay, now, um, it does not recognize any camera profiles. These are the ones that I have installed for my camera. So because it's not um, a raw file for my camera. Okay. Structure. All right. Now this is where we're going to take it higher. And we're going to take it in and brush it into this tree. Okay. So I just want the structure here. Okay to give it some more strength and oomph, as you said, okay? And what I might do is just like swash a little bit of structure around the tree, okay? So your eye sort of starts coming to this area, okay? Your eye goes to sharpness, remember? Enhance AI, okay, so it's already doing some enhancing AI and we don't want to darken the sky anymore, so I'm just going to dial it back, if anything. Landscape. I'm going to go back here because I feel like it's also a little bit blue, and I want to correct the color a little bit more here before I move up. Okay, so taking out a little bit of blue. Now I'm going to come back to landscape. And... Foliage enhancer is turned up a little bit, but I always dial this one down to about minus 30 because the color is like neon green. I just do not like it. And I don't know that I want golden hour on this one, but the foliage enhancer increased a little bit is doing okay. Let's see what it's doing in color. Okay, it has, looks like it has shifted the color of the blue and the green a little bit. And it's lowered the saturation of the blue and the green. And I don't necessarily want to desaturate green. So I don't like what this preset has done with the colors. So I think I'm just going to put them back for the most part. And do my own adjustments. See, it's not doing anything there. Saturation, I don't want extra yellow, if anything, and I don't want the sky extra blue. Yellow has been darkened. I'm going to darken green instead. Like so. And then I'll just do another before and after. Do you know how storm clouds kind of have that sort of weird green tint to them? So that's what I'm looking for here. I'm just tinting the sky a little bit. All right, let's see. So taking some color out of the landscape. Okay. I haven't even done a vignette yet. We haven't even talked about that. Color harmony. All right, what is it doing here? So it looks like it's just dialing up the brilliance a little bit, but we are going to play with this one. Okay, so I can brighten the land or darken it. Like so, and I definitely don't want the brilliance. And there is a vignette on this one. So let's see where it's at. Definitely need to resize. And put it, oops, put it over here. I don't want to darken the sky. I do want to see if it can get that part there. 
So I'm going to dial that up. So I'm darkening this bottom corner here. That looks pretty good. Okay, so before and after, we've definitely dialed things up. I still want to do more of a custom vignette. So I'm going to go back to the develop tool again. And I'm going to bring the exposure down. I'm going to bring the blacks down. And I'm looking at this landscape here. Okay. I'm also going to desaturate it a little bit more. Like so. Then I'm just going to paint it in little by little. So 30%, maybe not even that. Maybe let's go 14%. And I'm just painting it in where I want to darken. So I still want to bring attention to that tree. This whole bottom part I want to darken. For some reason there's like stripes in here and I want to kind of get rid of the stripes. And maybe even a little bit in there. See if we can pick up some detail. Okay. See how that's just darkening? This is a custom vignette. This is a way to do a custom vignette. You could do this with the dodge and burn tool, but I find that it um, I find that it adds a color shift and it goes a little bit weird. Okay. So I'm gonna copy this mask. And then I'm gonna do some minus details. So I want to lose some of the details in this area down at the bottom here, right? Because it's too sharp for me. So let's take it down. And then I'm going to paste that mask in so it's only in this bottom corner. I don't know if you could see that or not. Let me just go a little more severe and you can be able to see it. So what I'm looking at here is I've got this bottom part selected and I'm just lowering the details so that the details don't stand out as much. And I can do the same thing with a minus structure. Let's just take it extreme so you can see what's happening. Paste it in. Hey, can you see how this part at the bottom here is getting a little blurred? So I'm not going to go as extreme as that, but the idea is that it's taking attention off of those things because they're grabbing attention because they're sharp. So how's the tree now? Uh, let's see. <laughs> no neon puke. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh my goodness. Okay, we got talk about steers, losing body parts. Um, probably because you're used to the image. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that's why it's a good for somebody else to have eyes on your image because you know, you know, what you intended. And I may take it a completely different direction than you take it, right? Uh, oh, Kelly's here. Good. I've got one of your images, Kelly. Uh, I'm going straight to the clouds and the sky, completely ignoring the foreground. Interesting. Well, the sky, I, I don't think that's weird at all, Neil, because the sky has a lot of contrast, right? And it's that bit there that is taking your attention for sure, right? So if I wanted to um, take away some of that, for example, okay, I could take away some drama uh, let me just try a couple of things here. No, nope, that's not going to do it. Um, I want to see if I can bring some drama down in the sky. So if I do develop again, uh, let's take the highlights down and the shadows up and see how that's shifting things a little bit. And it's definitely blue. So let's shift it that way a little bit. Okay, now I'm only looking at the sky. So the rest of the image has gone a little weird, right? But just, just bear with me because I'm going to do a mask on this one and it should pick up the sky with mask AI. So we should be able to do 
just sky. Okay. Preset ruined the greens. I never like yellow greens. Um, it's possible, but I went and I adjusted this preset. So everything in there was, was what I chose for it. Okay, so it's picking the sky, and it did a pretty good job. All I have to do is go in and just paint in this last little bit in here. Get all these parts, okay? So I just want to make sure I get the parts of the sky, right? So now I'm taking a little bit of drama out of the sky. Is that a little better, right? I almost like it dramatic though. Like it's really dramatic. And I've also solved that problem of the clipping. So it's not clipping anymore. Okay. For some reason, I still see this one in black and white. Um, that's what I was thinking when I first saw it. Right. And we can now really play with the tones. We can bring the foreground out. Right. Sky, we can darken even more. And then we need to go back to develop because now, see, we're missing some whites here. So we definitely need to make sure that we're touching the edge of the graph. So now we've gone too far. Okay, so we we'll have a little bit of contrast there. And let's do smart contrast. See, it's these stripes in here that are driving me crazy, actually. Right, the thing that bugs me is the stripes. And I don't know if that was created with the um, preset when we did one of the... No, they're there. Yeah, they're there. It's just enhanced it, right? So what do you think about it in black and white? If we want to do um, a split tone, you can just do the toning tool. I just had my tools folded up. We can do toning, or we could do a lot. Um, but we want to do shadows. And I'm going to do a bluish, greenish kind of tone like that. Okay. Let's just get a blue. There we go. So there's a blue. And then highlights. This is what's called a duo tone. So somebody earlier said sepia and blue. I forget who said that. Um, but now this is what's called a duo tone. So the highlights and the shadows are different tones, right? So there's just a different processing to it. So I'd love to see what you did with it, Dale. I'm curious. Um, let's see. Uh, you like this edit, Lee? Sun rays. Um, no, I don't think I would put sun rays here because where would it come from? And it, it, I'm not sure it make, would make sense. Um, interesting in black and white, except for the tree. So you want the tree in color. Trish wants to see the tree. Hmm. I think the sky in combination with the tree because they both have their own drama, right? So I like the sky dramatic, um, but I want the tree. They're both pulling you in, right? Um, you could definitely add lightning, right? You could get a sky replacement, but I wouldn't want to do a sky replacement because this one is really dramatic. Uh, but let's just see. I'm curious now about Trisha's question about the tree being in color. Okay, so if I wanted the tree to be in color, let's just see what it's going to look like. I'm not sure it's going to be what you want because now it's just yellow. I don't think it. I don't think that's what you want. And now we have undo. So I just undid. I much prefer it like that. Okay. Um, I mean, the other thing that I would probably do in, did I do in develop? Did I mask this one? I think I did. Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. So the other one I would probably do in here um, or come back and do it in a separate develop again is to try and deal with some of these. Let's try the, let's try the dodge and burn tool. Um, I kind of want to get rid of the stripes. 
if I'm being honest, completely honest. I could go back to the color tool and see if that, if I can bring the yellow down and the green up to try and make them match. So I can darken the yellow and brighten the green a little bit. Or is it orange? Ah, it's orange. Right, but then it does the same on the tree, which I have to mask out the tree. Okay, so I'm just gonna erase it from the tree because I don't want the tree affected. Okay, so let's see what that's doing. Okay, that's definitely bringing the foreground down. And I might just decide to ditch color harmony. All right, let's go back up here. So now let's see where the tone's down. Still stripey, right? I'm not crazy about the whole stripey, you know, foreground here, which is what bugs me. Um, and this this thing here too. So let's do some dodging and burning. So darken. Remember to bring your strength down really low, like 12 to 15 max. So I want to, it looks like a bird's nest or something. I don't know. It just bugs me. Okay. So I want to darken these corners and this bit here. I might even try to race that out, to be honest. Okay. Then I'm going to work on these. My mouse is disconnected again. It keeps doing that on me. There we go. Uh, I want to try and fix these stripes. So I'm darkening, right? So I want to get in these light areas and try and darken. It's like somebody mowed the lawn in stripes or something. It's the oddest thing. Okay, that's a better. We're getting there. See, this is the tool where you want to build this up. You don't want to do it all at once. Okay. So build it up. Build it up. And then I would also go in and do lighten. So lighten. Same thing. Strength lowered. Smaller brush. And then go over the dark stripes. Okay. So you're really getting specific trying to trying to make them a little closer together see how that's producing a color shift though that's the problem with the clone or the dodge bird dodge and burn tool it's shifting the color there's blue in there now yeah see now i want to lighten around here so let's try the erase tool yeah let me see if i can get rid of this thing i want to take a full pass at the whole thing and just see if I can get it. And it just it just needs to be the white part is what's attracting my attention. It's like I said, it's a, like a bird nest. So I want to just minimize those white bits. That's definitely better. It kind of matches over here now. Okay, so I'm going to do this stick. There we go. Let's do the sticks one at a time. Okay, so little bit by little bit. And if you have to, go to the clone tool, okay? So erase only tries to erase things. This is what I talked about in that video. Clone, you can go with a lower percent. So I can go with 30% and I can choose my target or my source out here and then I can clone down into it, okay? So hit alt option to pick a new clone source okay and then i'm cloning down into this area okay. that was not the perfectest cloning job ever so i'm constantly changing my source here okay <coughs> i'm not sure i've done a good job here it looks kind of blurry so I'm not happy with that, to be honest. So I'm just going to undo it. And let me try it again. I'm going to clone from way over here. 
I hate this thing at the bottom. I wish I could like move it somewhere. Uh, we're getting closer. Kind of making a mess. See, it's a it's a fine line between cloning and and making a mess. So I'm playing with <coughs> different areas to clone from. It's kind of making a mess, but I could always go back to a race and give a race another go as well. Okay, so that's how these tools work well together. So let's do that. And I just want to do a pass here and see, see if it makes a better texture. I find that the clone tool often sort of makes things look blurry and I'm trying to just make it a little bit more random. That looks pretty good. All right. Zoom out. That looks pretty good. Okay. So see how that thing in the foreground was drawing attention? Did we do a better job on the stripes? Okay. All right. Let's see what we think. I can add lightning bolts, yes. Um, where's Thor when I need him? Well, you know, we could go to Photoshop and add him, but I think I will refrain. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the cutting of the field as well because they cut it one way and then the other way, and that's just how it comes. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't get cut up on the strips, just the lay of the land. Sepia brown. You want to see it more sepia? Uh, sunny in the foreground where you were standing. Tree needs to be brighter. Tree needs to be brighter, you think? Okay. <laughs> Skinny neuter steer. Uh, well, isn't there a different name? There's a there's a name for a steer that has its parts or a cow, a male cow that has its parts and then one that doesn't. Tree has a skeletal arm. Could the white on the tree be enhanced? Yes, it does look like a skeletal arm. The wood in the tree, can you highlight that a bit more? um give you more to play with uh going in and cropping down to just the tree just the tree yeah the trick with that though neil is that it's a it's a iphone shot right so there's a lot of pixels but the pixels aren't as big as what you would have in a camera right so if we go and do some kind of dramatic crop like this you're not going to have a lot of pixels left, right? I think that the that it's far more dynamic the other way, right? We could definitely come in a little bit more. Do we want to get rid of that tree, maybe? Like that, right? It's definitely simplified it, right? It's more simplified. Um, somebody said they wanted to brighten the tree. Well, let's try the super contrast again because I want to see what happens with mid toe. So I'm looking at the tree when I'm doing this. Okay. So I can bring out some contrast and I'm going to paint it just onto the tree. Okay. Okay, so let's just do that. Paint it into the tree, specifically the middle part. Yeah, see, I've got, I got to do a better job of painting because I painted around the edge here. And like so. Some really cool trees in the Fanal Forest where I was in Portugal as well. Hey, how's that? Is that bringing the tree out a little bit more? Like that? How's that? Spooky enough? 
Uh, did we do details? Yeah, we did details. I think it's a really cool image. I still think it would be cropped, better cropped, leaving this other tree, personally. But I could live with, with losing more of the foreground. Something like that. Apparently, I like pano crops today. This one feels more balanced. Um, when we cropped in, it doesn't feel as balanced to me. A giraffe. <laughs> a puffin. A baby puffin, Trish. If you've watched uh, any of Vanelli's things, he's traumatized by, apparently they told him he ate a puffin. No worries, Holly. Send the other one. I can still do it another time. But you know what? Do what I said with that one that's out of focus. Make it into a background. I think it's actually kind of cool. Uh, did I already do the crop from the bottom? I did. I did some crop from the bottom. You want me to do more or was that before I just cropped it? Ooh, I love a philosophical question. When does it become the point when all the problems of an image make one just say move to another image that has fewer problems? It depends on the potential of the image, do know, for me anyways. Um, for me, this image has a lot of potential, so I would spend some time working on it. Um, if there's something that's major, if I'm cloning stuff out, uh, it, it, uh, it all depends on you, I guess it comes down to you, right. And how important that image is and what you think its potential is, because here's the reality of like being an actual professional photographer. When I'm delivering portraits to a client, for example, I would probably spend about 30 minutes per image on the final editing, 30 minutes per image. Okay. Um, if I'm doing an image, image, something like this, that might be for an art gallery exhibit or just my portfolio or, or that I'm really keen on that image, I might spend an hour or two on one image. Right. But that's me. And that's where I'm at in my journey. Right. doesn't mean that that's right for you. Bull versus steer. Yeah, heifer maybe. No, heifer is a female, isn't it? Now I got to look up all these. Yeah, he heifer is a female. Uh, let's see. All this cow talk today. Left star balances it. Yeah, that's, that was my thinking as well. Yay, we got a five-star review. Anybody, anybody here did you leave the review? Um, Samsung is only 64 megapixels. Well, see, and that's the thing. Um, mine is as well, but any anything in in the cell phone range, like any, as your sensor in here, even though it says 64 megapixels, that's not the same as 64 megapixels in, in my camera that's behind me, okay? Because the sensor is teeny tiny in here. Okay, teeny tiny. So when they say megapixels, like all that means is, and it should be um, megapixels, of, I think is abbreviated MG. Correct me if I'm wrong, Rob. So I'm going to use a really simple example. Um, I don't have a piece of paper I can write on here. So let's just say, for example, you have um, in your image, you have pixels that are 400 by 600 or 4,000 by 6,000. Okay. So let me get a calculator here. I've got a calculator app. So if we have 4,000 by 6,000, okay, you have 24 million pixels in, in the image. Okay. So there's 6,000 across 4,000 down, right? There's six, 24 million pixels, right? So megapixels literally means millions. So that would be a 24 megapixel picture, okay? But if your sensor is this big, okay, versus, let's say, okay, here's a, maybe a good example. Let's say this is a sensor in your phone. This is the sensor in your camera, okay? If they're both 24 megapixels, they both have 6,000 by 4,000, which one is going to give you the better resolution, right? They're both 24 megapixels, but the pixels in your camera are larger than the pixels in here. Does that make sense? 
So a little off topic today, a little, little note about megapixels. Thank you, Dale. Great job of showing so many things to think about and options. Uh, that's what I that's what I like doing, you know, and that's what I love about doing this this live is that it's not my images, so I just get to play around. I just get to go, hmm, what can I do on this one? <coughs> you could use upscaling, yes. Um, again, it's only good to a certain degree, right? So if I want to print where it comes into play is, is enlarging things, right? So if I want to print an image from my camera that's on the tripod back there, you know, I can easily print a 30 by 40, right? Inches, right? If you want to print that from your cell phone, I just recently did some prints for a friend uh, that they took on their cell phone and I put them on canvas and stuff for her. Then uh, I upscaled them a bit because they were fairly small and we were able to print like 14 by 28. We made panoramas, right? But you really have to keep in mind that they're not going to be as sharp and the pixels are going to start pixelating, right? So if you look at it up closer, right, your viewing, your viewing distance is shorter. It's You're going to see the difference, right? Yes, the size of the pixels matters for noise and light capture. Absolutely. A steer is a castrated male bovine. Males with their parts are bulls. Okay, thank you for that, Janelle. So steer versus uh, a bull. And then a heifer is a female. So, okay, <laughs> we've, got, we've got all of the identifications for all the cows tonight. Got that out of the way. Out of the way. <clears throat> all right. Um, it is 7.30 here. Let's just see how far I got. Um, I know Kelly is here, and I saw one of Kelly's images. Oops. Let's see, where is yours at? Yeah, this one here, Kelly, I wanted to do if you're still here because I want to do one more in Lightroom and I want to do this one, right? Because I thought it was kind of a cool image with the rain and sort of, you know, the green elevator in the background here. Definitely looks like, you know, something rural Alberta-ish kind of thing, right? And <laughs> bovine. Uh, <laughs> Ollie's having a craving for a glass of milk. How about a milkshake? Have a milkshake. All right. So let me work on this one. Um, CR2 file. So that's Canon. And I'm going to go up to the camera matching again. So this one, I don't have any preconceived ideas. I know that I want to give it a bit of punch. Um, ooh, monochrome. Actually, it's kind of interesting. So I don't think I want the landscape one this time. If anything, I'm just going to go with neutral or I'm going to go and look and see what it has down in these modern ones. Now, look at that right out of the gate. Number one and the modern punches it up and gives us kind of it gives me a direction. Um, I like the blueness of that one. See, it's punching them up. That one's red. Don't like the red. Okay, so that one's not bad. Let me try number six. That's better. So this is kind of my process. I pick one and then hover over. So I like the blueness of that one. And remember, keep in mind that you can dial these down. Okay, so if I chose number one, but I'm like, oh, it's a little bit too severe, right? I can dial it down a little bit. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with that at about 65. And right off the bat, it's helped us punch this up, right? Now I'm going to do the shift double click thing. And it's going to punch this all the way up to the top with the whites. But I don't think I want to go that far. And I don't think I want to go that far here either. Because it's a dull, dreary day. And we need it to represent that, okay? We could do dehaze, right? But look what happens. You end up with all kinds of weird, funky stuff if I go too far. We could do a little bit of dehaze. And the other thing I could do is dehaze um, more focused, right? I definitely want to check the lens corrections here as well because I'm want i seeing some, some colors, perhaps maybe a chromatic aberration. 
Uh, it's going to show up mostly on this one. So let's just do that. There's a profile correction. Okay. Which is helpful. And it's ISO 800, but it's quite noisy. It's quite, it's got quite a lot of grain. So what we could do is the new noise reduction in Lightroom, right? It literally makes a new DNG. I don't know if it's going to apply all of our settings. I haven't really tested this one a lot yet. So let's try it. So when you do this one, all right, it gives you a choice of how much you want to remove the noise. Okay. So it's showing you before and after. I can move this around a little bit. All right. So I can say how much do I want to. So there's the before and after. So it's doing quite a good job. The only thing that I don't like about this is I can't zoom out on this view. It's hard to kind of move it around the scene to see anything that, you know, like the background. But it's doing a good job. So I'm going to leave it there. Now it says it's going to take one minute to do that. So let's just see how long it takes. Okay, so the thing shows your indicator up here, processing, okay? Now keep in mind that when we tried to do Luminar Sharpen, it took a long time, Topaz Sharpen, Topaz Denoise, they take a while, right? So this one is telling us it's gonna take a full minute to process this. It's halfway there, um, okay. Uh, do cows make almond milk? <laughs> no. Uh, it does kind of look like one of the images I provided. Um, I did discuss the topics, uh, Danelle, but I will cover that again. We have three topics coming up. We're going to do animals. What was the other one? Animals, action and forest. So those are the next three weeks. So animals of any kind, um, birds are had separate. So animals of any kind, um, action. So that sports, toddlers, anything that's moving, panning and so on. And then in the forest. So forest, moss, paths, trees, and so on. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like it did apply the, um, effects that I had already done and you can definitely see let's compare these side by side here okay so if we go into compare mode okay uh, let's just switch them around here okay so original CR2 file it's the Canon file on the left DNG on the right and when we zoom in Definitely sharper, definitely denoised, and there's still detail. Okay, so if I zoom in even more, right, can you see the noise on the left? And it's kept some detail in the grass, and it's made this blurry in the background, so that's fairly impressive. All right, let's try to do the words, pull out the words here. Um, did do as job, good job there, but we're zooming in to like 300% at this point. Okay. There's a DNG. So let's continue from there. So now we've done the noise reduction. So when you use that new noise reduction, it makes a new file. Okay. So it does not apply it on your original. It makes a new file. I want to do um, some cropping on this one. So the same problem I have here, and I seem to be in a flipping mode today because I feel like I'm going to flip this one as well, because everything is leading us in from the left to the right. But the problem is there's nothing here to keep our attention. Okay. So bear with me for a second here. We can't really read the writing on there anyway. So I'm going to flip this guy again, right? Because I have a method of my madness. Now, when I'm going to crop this, I want to lose some of this foreground. And I want to lose some of this bits on the right. About to there. Right? Because now, this little squiggle bugs me too. Now, my goal is, you know, 
this leads your eye up to here. Okay, so I want this area sort of to be a little more of the focus, like so. Okay, can you see that? So now we're, we're coming from the small um, light standards or, or poles, and they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then in between those two poles, we have something to land on, okay? Oh, you're doing a poll. Animals in forest are tied, then floor, floor, flowers and action last. Okay, so are we changing that? We want to do animals and animals in forest then. All right, so we're gonna do animals and forest. Yes, because who said they're going to the forest? Deb. All right, so now I get to decide what I want to do with this image. Okay, do I want to brighten it? Do I want to darken it? We could go into the vignette tool and we could actually create a white vignette, okay? And I'm gonna adjust the shape, something like this instead. Okay, so that's the shape. So see how I'm getting the shape adjusted. Then I'm gonna adjust the feather and dial it down. So I'm just adding that little wisp of white on the corners, okay? We're just playing with the size and in and out. There we go. Something like that. Okay. So when you have something that is um, all light, this would be considered a high key image, right? And you have something that in the image that's darker, that's where you're going. Your eye is going to go. So your eye will go to the dark thing in this plate. In this case. So I'm going to do, remember I talked about dehaze. I'm going to pull some dehaze just on the grain elevator. See that? Just in between here. So I can emphasize it just a little bit more. Okay. Like so. Okay, I've got it on the grass. I don't want to have it on the grass. So a different way to go, right? Could this one go black and white? Absolutely. Okay, if we want to go black and white, we can go black and white. And then play with the tilts. I'm not even sure there's any color in here. Well, oh, this one is blue and purple. So I can brighten the sky, I can darken the grass, what about the road, darken the road, oh, that's the lines on the road, we definitely don't want to darken that, so there's not much color here, I'm not sure this one works as well in black and white, to be honest, so let's go back here. It's a minimalist. So this is what is called like minimalist photography. It's very simple, right? It's very simple. A <laughs> rainforest puffin. A rare forest puffin. There you go. We'll invite Vanelli to that one. Dale. Okay, so it's just simple. There's not a lot to do, or you don't have to do a lot. Okay. Uh, and it feels kind of desolate and isolated, right? With the rain. And that's okay. Um, we could do that same kind of look that I did a minute ago. We could turn the, instead of going full black and white, I can just bring the saturation down a little bit. Maybe vibrance. Okay, so vibrance instead. So play with vibrance versus saturation because they do slightly different looks. Okay. Let's just leave a little bit of color. And then let's go back to color grading. <clears throat> now, there's not a lot of shadows here, <clears throat> so if we add some color to the shadows, that's yellow, okay, so that's adding more of a sepia tone. We can go the opposite way, and we could say, well, let's go blue. Let's go blue on the shadows. See how that's affecting the grass. 
and let's go yellow on the sky. Okay, now we have something very different looking. Or let's go the opposite way. Blue-ish on the sky. Yellow on the shadows. Maybe orange. Maybe red. Ooh, green is kind of cool, actually. So I'm literally just playing with it. So kind of bringing up the green there. Okay, so we have a very different look. Kind of like the yellow, kind of like the yellow sky. Kind of like the yellow sky and the blue-ish highlights. Bluish shadows. That's kind of cool. And we could also play with midtones. Right, so midtones are in here. You can literally pick any color on this spectrum. So if you're not sure what to pick, play around. That's kind of neat. So there's the before and after. Okay, so you can do some neat um, kind of split toning or tri toning, or even it's almost like it's cross processed, right? You can make this look more like the apocalypse. <clears throat> Yeah, exactly, Stephanie. That's why I put a little bit of yellow in that other image, the, the storm one with the storm clouds, for sure. More grit on the road. More grit. Well, again, we'd have to go to Photoshop and add that, which we could do. Or uh, let's just see what I can do here. Let's just do a linear gradient. So I can do a linear gradient that selects mostly the road, something like that. Okay. And then I can texture it up a little bit. I don't know that there's detail in there. Yeah, it's a little blurry. So I don't know if that's the best option, but we can definitely Add a bit more grit by selecting the road to that. <clears throat> yeah, so that helps, Kelly, because I literally just did that one radial filter around there and did a little bit of dehaze. And then you have to be careful about darkening it because when you darken, um, you'd have to do a little more particular masking, like I would do just select object, because if I darken anymore, you're going to start to see that, right? You'll start to see the whole circle, right? Like if I want it darker, that's why I added the blacks, because then it's not going to affect the white instead, right? And then we can darken it a little bit, but... If you want to get it off the sky, we could do subtract luminous range and then just pick the sky, right? Or I could do subtract sky and let's see how it does. Okay, so if we want to view the mask, now it's not selecting the sky. Okay, so now, eh, but it also lost the top of the green elevator, okay? So then I have to go add back in and I can say, okay, add an object and I want this. So I'm going to get the top of it. Yeah. So obviously some <laughs> weird stuff happened there. I think what I did sky select like that. So try and keep it so that it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't disappear or doesn't make the um, circle obvious. Right. Uh, note, you cannot add any layers in Lightroom. Uh, if you will need layers, you have to go to Photoshop or to Luminar, Dale. So no layers in Lightroom. Um, if you need something like layers, if you want to add, that's why I said if you wanted to add a texture screen, like I talked about that one earlier, right? Because this one actually might be really cool. Um, and Kelly says she uses both Luminar and Lightroom. So let's just take this one 
into Luminar. I'm just going to take it as a JPEG, just in the essence of speed and time here, and add a texture screen. Because uh, an image like this, an image like this could be actually really cool um, with the texture. Okay, let me pop this over here. Okay, so we want to add a texture. And then we can get crazy with stuff too. I mean, like we could go and do a lot. So uh, you can't really do lots in, in Lightroom either. You can sort of, they're, they're the camera profiles. It's similar to the camera profiles, okay? And that green is sort of getting me. One of my one of my favorite LUTs in here is is sepia, um, sepia and wooden. I like these ones. See, look at look at sepia. Okay. I like sepia a lot. So it gives it more of that brown in the grass. Okay. And then if we want to add a layer, okay, I've got some textures in here. Let's see what I think might work. I want it to look sort of like it's grungy paint. This one might work. These are from a new set that I'm working on, which is, um, did we put the Morocco textures out? Yeah, we did. <clears throat> the Morocco textures. So it's all things that I photographed in Morocco. Uh, if you want to share that, please, Rob. And my, my computer is tired. I think I'm going to get a desktop, actually. Uh, well, it's catching up. Let's see what Neil says. Uh, it seems to be either a phase or a fad of noise and grain being added to photographs. And any thoughts in this matter? I like grain. Um, that's another thing that you could do with this one is we could just add some film grain. But I want to see um, how this one works with the textures first. Because we got the thing to just show up. But I want to see if it works okay with the texture. But grain is another thought that I did have for this image. So... I don't know if it's a fad so much, um, but it, it definitely has its place. So usually I'm going to be choosing overlay or um, soft light. So let's choose overlay, increase the density, and then I could just sort of play with the placement. Okay. I'm looking at the sky mostly because that's where I'm wanting it. Um, I don't mind that. It's not my favorite texture. It's not probably working the best. Um, but uh, I'm just going to remove it from sort of the middle section here. Okay. And... I don't know. It's not doing it for me. This one's not doing it for me. I could try another one. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, this one might be neat. It's kind of uh, like darker, right? This Look at this. Like it's cloudy and dark on the sky. This one could be cool. That's kind of neat. And it gives us this orange thing as well. But we can get rid of the orange if we want because we can edit this. All right. So look at We've got darken and multiply. Now it looks like an old photo, doesn't it? Now we're getting somewhere. All right. If we don't want the orange, remember, this is on this layer. So all I'm going to do is I can just make it black and white. Okay. So now it's not orange. Or I can just go into either color or develop and just dial the saturation down a little bit. Right? But I don't mind the orange, actually. It feels like an old photo. Okay. I like that. That's working for me. If you want the same thing on the bottom, right, you can actually add the same image again. I just have to find it and do the same thing. So I put it as, did I put it as darken or did I put it as multiply? 
multiply. Okay, so I just check the other layer, dial the opacity down, and dial the color down. So now, right, this one's got the darkness at the bottom. And it kind of fills in these places over here. And if we don't want it on the grain elevator, we can just remove it. I kind of like that. It's kind of looking like an old photo, right? Um, and if we want grain on the bottom one, so remember, make sure you know which layer you're on. Uh, I can go down in here and find the film grain. I'm just going to come in a little bit. Right, do we want large? Large grain tends to make it look blurry, um, as as does increased roughness. Right, so the more sort of old we want it to look, we increase the amount. Okay, so I always like to increase the amount because you can see what it's doing. Okay, and then dial it back. Let's do like so. Okay, so it's just giving that, that little bit of grain, which makes it feel a little more like an old photo. I don't know about you, but I kind of really like that. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, sandpaper would be good. Yeah. Yeah, just photograph piece of sandpaper. There you go. I've thought of working on some textures. Uh, I've got some ideas for some other new texture packs for you guys. But we are at two hours, so I got so carried away. Uh, let me go back. Let me go back to, um, let me apply this, and we'll go back to Lightroom, because I forgot that I brought this from Lightroom. So let's take a look at the original and the did i copy it yes we did because we did noise reduction actually let's just undo this so we have the full reset so the original the lightroom edit and then the luminar edit might be a little bit orange but i could still dial that out right if i brought that into photoshop um, as a smart object we could dial that out but I like it, uh, right? So original, Lightroom, finished. I like it. Okay. So here we are. Here we are. Submit your photos, animals, and forest. Is that the final answer in the poll, Rob? Uh, those are the top two. Well, you've got some playing to do, Kelly. I, I think it's a really cool image, right? Like at first glance, you go, oh, there's nothing there. But minimalist is fine. I think it's really cool. Thanks, Dale. Well, bring more people next time. <laughs> Tell everybody to come. If you went to Photoshop, you could use filter sandpaper if they are working. Oh, is it? Um, is that one of their new neural filters? I haven't tried that one yet. Oh, Marguerite, um, you love the elevator. And I do have some of your images as well. And I didn't get to everybody. So as usual, I will save the ones that I didn't get to for another time. Because there's lots of great other other great images here. Um, Marguerite sent me the tractor, which is definitely rural. And this cute little guy. <laughs> look at his look at his cheeks. He's very cute. He's very cute. So we'll definitely do something with him or her we're not going to get into talking about any more genders of animals <laughs> today um and what i can do actually is put these ones into animals because 
we've got animals coming up. So I'm just going to take these animals that we've had submitted that I haven't worked on, and I'm just going to drop them right into the animal category. Okay. This one is still pretty rural for me, so I'm going to leave that as rural. So submit your animal photos for next week and your forest photos for the following week. So next week, the date will be the 28th, and then we will be July 5th. So we'll see you on the other side after that of both of the Independence Days, Canada and U.S. So until next week, uh, I got some chicken with my name on it, so I'm going to go and eat that chicken. Definitely is a female chicken, <laughs> okay? I'm pretty sure, okay? Uh, and we'll see you all next week. Thanks for joining in, everybody. This was a fantastic week. I had a lot of fun processing your images. So take care, and we'll see you next week for more Animal Farm funniness. <laughs>